remember this? Uh, I, I don't, but the fact that he last time was a thousand games ago and most players don't play a thousand games. A thousand six hundred and eighty career games ago. Uh, good for him. To be precise. Probably deserved to come off the bench then. Well, yeah. he did the whole festivity with the chalk and all of the stuff, but here's LeBron back in action. No, it was impressive to watch him. Like, uh, watching the game, look, it looks like he's lost probably about 10, 12 pounds. He looks slender. He looks lighter trying to keep that pressure off the foot. But ultimately, they could just not get into a rhythm there in that first half. Yeah, the Bulls up by double figures here. LeBron James going to work over his former teammate Alex Caruso gets that one to go. But every time the Lakers made a push, the Bulls, they had an answer for this one. So pushing ahead to the fourth quarter here. A couple possessions later, the Lakers down 99-82. LeBron James full steam ahead. Look out. No, it was impressive. But this is the thing. You're going to run into me and Dave were talking about before the show. It's like they've got some issues as you see that deep three. If they're knocking down threes, that's game. But they got some issues with that lineup. Let's take a listen to LeBron James after the game. I felt okay. Um, obviously, you know, the rhythm is the most important. You know, I had um, a couple, you know, drives and the ball got away from me. A couple shots didn't feel as, uh, as good as before, obviously. But, you know, I was out for four weeks. So between that and the wind, um, just got to get those things back um, leading to the final stretch of the season. When the doctors told me I was uh, healing faster than anybody I've seen before with the injury. Did anyone ever suggest surgery? Yeah, two doctors. Why did you decide against it? Because I went to LeBron James with feet. And he told me I should. The LeBron James of feet. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's still plenty of uncertainty in the West play and field. Two and a half games, they separate the 7th through the 12th seed. And so as it stands, you can see right there, the Lakers, they would play the Thunder in a 9-10 matchup for their chance to keep their playoff hopes alive. And EP ESPN's BPI gives LA about the 8th best odds to make the playoffs <laughs> in the West. LeBron James a feat? Uh, LeBron James a feat. You think, uh, that, that's I think those are the people on my wiki feet. Uh, there's a lot of wiki feet out there. There's a lot of wiki feet. We don't need to talk about my wiki feet. Yeah. That's, that's why I don't wear open toe shoes. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Big Perk is joining us Speaking now. Speaking of wiki feet, what's yeah. up, Perk? Gross. Richard, I want to start with you here. Dave McMenamin with us as well. To try to get this on back back on track, please, Richard, what did you take away from LeBron's return? Uh, he's, just, he's his best PR person of all time. I want to know who the doctor is that the LeBron of feet because he must be very, very good for a very long time. But all kidding aside, what I, what I take from LeBron is this. He's back. He's ready. His teammates know there's a final push. Back when he was talking about this was the most important, I think, 25 games of his career. Now it's down to a small segment where they got eight games left. So I look at this as a good start, from my opinion, before they go on this road trip. Right. There's some winnable games there. If they play right around 500, I think they get in. If they play slightly above, I think they have a chance to move up to the 7-8. If they play below 500, they risk moving out. So it all falls within just this stretch. Hmm. Park? What happened with LeBron feet and him being back last night, first of all, he looked phenomenal. It don't even look like he skipped the beat. Yeah. But it was the Patrick Beverly healing. That's mm. what happened. The Patrick Beverly healing. And why I say that is because it just goes to show you the competitive nature in LeBron James. Like, here it is. He heard everything that Patrick Beverly was saying. He know he knows and he listens and he watches and he sees every single thing. He know the shots that Pat Bell shot at them since he's been traded from the Lakers. And that's the competitive nature in LeBron James. Yeah. That's why he really wanted to come back last night. So I look at it overall. I thought he didn't miss a beat. I thought he ran the floor well. I thought he moved well. I thought his cardio was up. They just didn't get the dub. But everything else... With the Lakers being healthy and they have D'Angelo Russell available on the floor with the way that AD and Austin Reeves and those guys been playing, they're about to go on a, a, a nice little win streak to, uh, and they're going to close the gap in my opinion. I, I think they're going to finish in the sixth seed to be honest with yeah. you. So one could, all, uh, could, could argue that they were ultra strong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see what I did there. Dave, all right, the Lakers, they have seven games left, four on the road. What Dave are their plans the for managing LeBron's minutes moving forward? Well, much the same way LeBron kind of managed his return and caught some of the people within the team off guard, quite frankly. I checked in with one of the Lakers' assistant coaches on Saturday, and I broke the news to him that LeBron was on the verge of coming back good at your job. against the ball. Yeah, pretty good. That's why I'm sharing the desk with you guys. Uh, but they aren't going to put too much on his plate 
but there's a reason why LeBron's already back. He wanted to use this eight game stretch to get the kinks worked out relatively quickly so then they can actually play you know, some strong basketball four or five games yeah. heading into whatever is going to follow after April 9th whether that's the playing tournament whether that's the playoffs LeBron admitted that the fact that the team went eight and five in his absence that motivated him to get back quicker and it wasn't necessarily Pat Beverly that motivated him perk it was his team motivated him because he and wanted to be a part of what they Pat were doing. Beth. It wasn't just, it was a lot of people been chirping. Oh, my gosh. A lot of chirping. There's a, a lot, lot of, of, a lot of stupid statements and <laughs> conversations have been had. And I have been glad I have been off work because <laughs> some of the things from people that I respect and some people that I don't really know or respect, we're saying some absolutely <laughs> insane things. And we're just going to leave it at that because Perk knows his name. Uh, <laughs> Dave, what are you looking at down the stretch here that gives you confidence in the Lakers? What are the things that you want to see to give them confidence in what they're going to do in the postseason? Well, their defensive efficiency has been in the top five since they made the trades. That's going to carry them. They need to take care of the basketball. 18 turnovers against the Bulls isn't going to get done. Five of them were from LeBron, and that compromises your defense because you're constantly playing three on two, two on one, running back on your heels, and teams are getting whatever they want, getting to the rim and then spraying out for threes, or then you got to foul them, and then right. they're getting in the bonus. It's a myriad of problems that can happen if you aren't taking care of the basketball. So getting that focus back, I believe, will help them a lot. And then they got to figure out the rotation. Rui Hachimura didn't play against the Bulls. Lonnie Walker got minutes as kind of a reward for mm -hmm. his big game against the Thunder. Darvin Ham's got to figure this thing out, stick with his 9-10 guys, and go forward these final seven games with a clear delineation. Something that they're going to have to address on the road mm -hmm. because they're not typically an out-shoot-you team. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting other teams an extra 10-12 possessions where they're already most likely a better shooting squad than you, and twos, you know, they're not as much as threes. So don't give them extra opportunity. That's the analysis you cut. Uh, you know, it's the high-level stuff. I do, I do have a question for you, though, Richard. What, what are you the LeBron James of? <laughs> Ball men <laughs> and with that let's go to break Prove um, me wrong. still to come someone no i, I today it is extra I'll shiny to, i'll go toe to toe with anybody let's go we're not dome talking about to dome. Dome. Wouldn't, wouldn't you go dome to dome yeah. dome to dome dome to dome right? no yeah. more toes to toes class, we don't need more, no more crusty feet uh, it was awful dog <laughs> this season hasn't been what we think it was gonna be it's really frustrating I think you can see it with me on the court. And I used to have really fun smiling on court, but it's just been so frustrating. Never like to see things go sideways between someone in the stands and a player. He just called me on my name, so I just had to make sure I looked him out of eye, see if he would say it to my face. You know, a lot of fans say things when you turn in your head or they say it in the crowd because they can get away with it. Sometimes you can play down to your competition. Sometimes you take things for granted. It's just, you know, unfortunate that we let these two games go. And so we got to figure out how to stop the bleeding. All right, now we welcome in our Mavs reporter, Tim McMahon. So let's just jump right in. What is the level of concern here, Tim, within the organization at this very moment? Malika, sound the damn alarms. Mm. I mean, Jason Kidd tried to. When he's talking about they're playing like dog beef, and then they come out the next game against the same bad Hornets team, missing three of their best players, and it's a worse start. I don't know what, what what's worse than dog, cat, I, it's squish, whatever it was. That's what the Mavericks did. And look, man, you had Luka Doncic acknowledge on Friday night he is as frustrated as he's ever been. Now yeah. he said it's not just about basketball. There are some some things that he's dealing with in his private life, but. The reason that they made the Kyrie Irving trade, this was a desperate move. Jason Kidd wanted it and Luka Doncic wanted it. Luka wanted it because he was so frustrated that the Mavericks, despite him playing at a near MVP level, were mediocre. He was miserable in mediocrity and they have been worse than that since the trade. This is the most disappointing team in the NBA. Oof. They've got a top 10 protected pick. They owe the New York Knicks. At this point, the question is, are they keeping their pick? Are they keeping their pick that stopped him protected coming off the West Finals last year? This is a total 
debacle. Okay, and there's some numbers to back that up because I'm looking at this. Since the trade deadline, the Mavs are last in opponent second chance points per game, last in rebounds per game, last in opponent field goal percentage at the rim, 28th in blocks, 27th opponent paint points per game, tied for 27th in skills hey. per game. The list goes on and on and on. So I think people look at the trade deadline and say, oh, wait, that's when Kyrie Irving went to the Dallas Mavericks. So is it fair? How much of the blame is there on Kyrie Irving's shoulders, if any? The only blame I'm going to put on Kyrie Irving's shoulders is he did not shoot the ball well during this home-and-home -home sweep by the Charlotte Hornets. But look, we all know Kyrie Irving's track record and, and the chaos tends to surround him. He has been a professional during his time in Dallas. Yep. He has not created any of these problems. You've had his teammates talk about what a great teammate that he's been. This is not a Kyrie Irving problem. Mm. Trading for Kyrie did not fix the problems that they had. Matter of fact, by giving Dorian Finney-Smith up in that deal, it made their problems worse. They went from a bad defensive team to an awful defensive team. They're also one of the worst rebounding teams in the NBA. You want to talk about problems, let's go back to the offseason. Let's talk about bungling the Jalen Brunson situation. That was the domino that led you giving up essentially the second best player on the West Finals team, then the third and the fourth and an unprotected pick for a rental of Kyrie Irving where you're going to have to throw a bunch of money to have a hope of keeping him. And then let's talk about, hey, they knew rim protection and rebounding were glaring issues for this team. They went out and gave JaVale McGee a three-year deal mm. and a promise of the starting job, okay? Because they say, hey, some footer, athletic, he can protect the rim, he can rebound. He started eight games. They had to pull the plug despite that promise. It was that bad. Since the All-Star break, JaVel McGee has played three minutes and 31 seconds. If we want to if we want to start finger pointing for problems, we can start with Mark Cuban, who's still ultimately the primary basketball decision maker for the Dallas Mavericks. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.